change from the bottom up. Joining us to link past progressive movements in U.S. history to those happening right this second. From Oregon, Micah White, co-creator of Occupy Wall Street and author of the new 2016 playbook, The End of Protest. So, and Micah, I want to ask you, because you and, you and Terrell have both mentioned this in some ways. You, the, the saying used to be in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, from protest to politics. And both of you mentioned the term, in many ways, governing and governance. Um, so it's not just protest, but, but wielding power in a governing mode. How different is that from previous movements in American political history? Well, I think that what the main difference that we're seeing is that social movements today are starting to function without leaders. And so whereas mm -hmm. you saw before a kind of a reliance on charismatic single individuals like Martin Luther King or Malcolm X, and that these people became kind of like the leader of the movement, Instead, what we're seeing now is that, that memes and ideas become the leader and that people follow the ideas that are the best. And so I think that the challenge now that we're seeing is how to have a leaderless movement that also is able to um, do things that traditionally were associated only with, being, with, with having leaders. Like traditionally, um, you know, only a leader-based leader, leader -based movement could uh, elect itself into power. But instead, now we're thinking about how can social movements do that? And I think that's partly because of the internet and the ability to communicate, like, like your other guests were saying, communicate, um, you know, horizontally using these social networking tools. So let me let me push back on that, um, both of you, because I see Terrell is agreeing with you. So when you say leaderless, someone's organizing protests, someone is doing the work of mobilizing people. There are people that are followed, uh, even on social media. So so when you say leaderless. It, it, is that really, really true? Or do you mean leaderless in the sense of relative to older social movements, there's not one publicly visible leader versus there are leaders in the movement who are doing the organizing work? Because I don't want to just assume that all of this is spontaneous. Absolutely. It's not spontaneous. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about because even, even today people say to me, well, you didn't create Occupy Wall Street. You know, and so it, what it is, what it means, though, is that the way that you create social movements now is you make an idea that other people take up as their own, and they actually don't even know where it came from. Mm -hmm. if, during Occupy Wall Street, people didn't actually even know where the idea for Occupy Wall Street came from. They didn't know who right. I was. They didn't know Adbusters. And so what it means to be leaderless today is that the ideas are taken up by the participants and shaped by the participants and guided by the participants. And the participants themselves have more control over the movement than the person who actually named the movement. Mm -hmm. Like there's like you can go and historically find out who named Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But those people don't have control over the movement, just like Adbusters and, and I didn't have control over Occupy Wall Street. Once we created that concept, mm -hmm. it went out and people took control of it. Uh, Micah, uh, final question. When you zoom out and look at the entire progressive landscape, so we just saw protests in the environmental justice movement around the Paris uh, global climate change talks. When you think about the LGBT rights movement, when you think about immigrant rights, uh, are, are there similarities you see across the progressive landscape? By the way, I should also, of course, mention the fight for 15 and, and low wage workers organizing and, and going on one day strikes. Are there similarities across? broadly speaking, the progressive movement in terms of protests and activism today? That's a really good question. I think that the important thing to realize is that all protests are part of the same protest. All movements are, start, are part of the same movement. What we're seeing happening right now is that people, they orient around specific policy issues, but what's mm -hmm. really at stake here is that the people are trying to gain control of the world. The people, the 99%, are trying to get into a political power where they can like if they want $15, $15 minimum wage, they have that. Or if they want gay rights, they have that. Instead of demanding from our, our elected representatives, we are the elected representatives. Hmm. So I think that what each of these specific movements is just a manifestation of the larger, deeper issue, which is we're going towards the position where a social movement is going to gain global governance in order to solve the global challenges facing us, like climate change, income inequality, uh, gender inequality. We're going to have to build a social movement that can uh, win elections in multiple countries in order to carry out a unified agenda. So these, these local policy issues are just manifestations of the same struggle. Hmm.